In October 1872, winter came early to the north of Norway. Seventeen young hunters, trapped by the encroaching ice, found shelter in the Swedish house on Svalbard. The house was well equipped with food and fuel, so they had no fears about surviving the long cold winter. When the ice melted next summer, two ships came to bring them home. But instead of survivors, the rescue team discovered four dead bodies just outside the house. Through the window they could see more bodies, in beds, in chairs and on the floor. A warning against trespassing hung on the front door that was also nailed shut from the inside. There were no medical experts on the rescue team, yet they concluded that all 17 men had died from scurvy. Dying from scurvy in a well-equipped house was not a heroic end. The dead trappers were given a damning epitaph accused of displaying bad leadership, incompetence and laziness. In 2008, a small group of stubborn Norwegian scientists were given permission to open the graves. We later will add a more summarized build of what has happened with these 17 who died, because we have no trust that they died of Sjöbuk. Alene. Så vi har ju teorin om att här är det både möjligheter för uh, blyförgiftning och här är möjligheter för uh, botulism. Särskilt ser att detta här är hermetikens barndom, hur uh, man ser i hermetikboxen att det är slumsat lagd och det är det är lagd sömma på insidan hur det är bly, betydliga procentandelar med bly in i dessa och när det blir ett surt element in i dessa boxar så kan så vill bly siva ut i i maten. 15 of the dead are buried in a mass grave just outside the Swedish house. The expedition has been given permission to open a 50 cm square opening in the grave. The wood is remarkably fresh after 135 years in the soil. We've reached the permafrost that preserved it, and that changes the situation for the scientists. Och då trekker vi oss tillbaka för det är etiskt försvarligt att gå löst på levningar som tar den till stede och det är inte skelett alltså som var förutsättningen för att vi skulle göra detta här. Så det enda som vi har fått gjort med den graven det är att få ta någon bakteriologisk pröva som vi hoppas kan ge ett rant i förbindelse med den här saken. The two trappers who died first were buried by their colleagues about 500 meters away from the house. The remains of those two are above the permafrost so can be examined. Så så fick vi ju fram någon skelettdelar där och de hade inte någon tegn som är typiskt för sjöbuk och Och det är ju vi väldigt glada för, för det, det bekräftar ju att det här är mer sammansatt än som så. Ja, som man får körbruk så, så bytes ju allt bindeväv ned och, och då betyder det att särskilt dessa muskelfästan på benen vill då få blödningar under benhinna. Och det kan man se med att det är en flossande flak av nybensformation hur dessa benen ska vara glatt. Och den typen förändring har inte dessa skelettan. De har mer anatomisk rena träck. From these 135-year-old skeletons, Ulf Espo was able to examine the remains and take good samples. On examination, the bones didn't have any of the classical signs of scurvy, a roughening of the surface. This was the first clue. The samples taken returned south with the scientists and were tested in the laboratory. The results showed that the level of lead in the bones of the hunters was 102 micrograms per gram. Ulf concluded that the hunters at the Swedish house died of lead poisoning. The tins of food they ate were all sealed with a lead solder, 
So much was used it can still be seen like icicles on the rusting cans left outside the house. As they ate this food, they were accumulating the lead in their body until it started to poison them. The symptoms of lead poisoning are similar to that of scurvy, and though the hunters knew how to treat that deficiency, they couldn't treat the poisoning. The Swedish house, with all its stored food and fuel, proved not to be the paradise it looked like when the 17 trappers who lost their ships came to find shelter there. <laughs>